Hello everyone, Steve Angel with Traditional Outdoors. Today we're going to be talking about uh, building an indestructible or virtually indestructible carbon arrow. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me how I go about building uh, the carbon arrows that I typically hunt with uh, and to make them so tough. Now, before I even get into this video, I'm not telling anyone that they need to build an arrow the way I build it to be successful. You don't. Um, but over the years, I have uh, developed arrows that I like the way they hold up, mainly on the 3D course. But if I know they hold up on the 3D course, hitting trees and limbs and misses and rocks, and then I know when I get out in the field, they're going to hold up. So this isn't for everyone. Again, if, if you're not into building arrows like this, feel free to continue with whatever you're using. I'm just going to show people because I've had a lot of people asking about uh, my setup. Now, in carbons, I typically shoot one of two arrows. One is the Black Eagle uh, Vintage. The other is the Black Eagle Outlaw. Um, both of these arrows are footed with uh, aluminum footing. I use the old uh, Easton Legacy shafts. And you can see just by looking at these, I've worn the anodation off of them. I mean, they have been shot thousands and thousands of times and they, they just keep, they keep coming back for more. Um, I've got two different setups that I use. I'll get into that a little bit more in the, uh, uh, after I show you a little clip here, but I typically over the last few years have been using a one piece system, meaning they're, you know, the, the broad head doesn't come off. For all intents and purposes, this is all glued together uh, as one piece. About halfway through the 2018 season, I actually switched, I'm not sure if that one's going to screw off or not, but I've got it in there pretty tight. I actually switched and went back to a screw-in head, and I'm going to cover all that in the different setups uh, after you watch this clip. But last year in March, uh, I was hunting hogs in South Carolina, a hunt I do every year, and a good friend of mine, Doug Gilmore, was asking me just how tough those arrows were. So we were on the way back from a, a morning hunt and there was a, a bunch of concrete building blocks on the side of the, the little dirt road there. So we hopped out and I decided to show him. I was shooting basically this setup here uh, in the video, which is a Black Eagle Outlaw 300 spine. Uh, it's full length. I've got a 200 grain point, a 250 grain uh, insert an adapter, meaning the, the points of glue on, it glues on to uh, the tip of, a, uh, of, of an insert. So you've got an adapter on one end and an insert that goes in the, uh, in the arrow. And I'll show uh, all of these after, uh, after this little clip. And then uh, I think it's two and a half inches of 2216 aluminum footing. And that's it. There's nothing inside the shaft that's hollow and that arrow comes out right at 800 grains. I think it's like 810 grains. So I'm going to Go over to that clip again there's three shots and i've basically edited all these out to where you just get the actual three shots so watch this and then we'll return and i'll walk through how i actually go about putting these together I got the knock this time. Well, that's shot number two. Arrow's still together. What weight's the arrow? What, what, what do you have up front on that thing? Um, so it's a 200 grain point, 250 grain stainless steel adapter slash insert, and then about 30 grains of aluminum switch. Shot number three. I got that one too. Well, you hit the same hole. I did hit the same hole. 
All right, that one broke the arrow. So third shot, 75 at 28, 800 grain arrow, and the third shot broke. Okay, so how does all this work? Um, so I start out with the bare shaft. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm tuning an arrow, which most of the setups I have, I don't need to tune anymore because I know what setup works. But if I'm tuning the arrow, I will build one arrow, no fletching, and I'll cut from the back of the shaft till I get it tuned in. Then I'll fletch that arrow. And once I know everything's good, then I'll start building my arrows. I'm not going to go into all that in detail, but what I'm going to do is go through how I actually go about building these. So I, I have my shaft, which again is either the, the Black Eagle Outlaw or the Vintage. Um, I have my footings. I always cut my footings to two and a half inches. Now the reason I cut them to two and a half inches is because the inserts, regardless of whether I'm using a, a one-piece insert adapter or an insert that's designed for screw-in head, I know those are just under two and a half inches long. So I want my footing to be just a little bit longer than the insert. And what that does is it pushes the, the leverage point on this shaft back just a little bit more. Now one thing to keep in mind when you are footing, if you're footing a 30, let's say you're thir footing a, a, a 31 and a half inch arrow with a two and a half inch footing, basically what you're going to do is you're going to change the effective length of that arrow from a spine perspective to 29 and a half inches. So you, you can't tune without the footing and then add it after the fact. You got to set this up and start from the beginning in tuning one of these arrows. So keep that in mind. So I have my footing. I know what diameters fit um, through trial and error. This is a 2219 and it's on a 300 spine outlaw. Now if I take that same 2219 it's a little too tight on the 350 vintage because of this um, wrapper that they've got around the arrow. So on this arrow it takes a 2216. But basically what I want is I want one that slides on there tight but there's no, there's no play. If there's any play it's too loose. One way you can tell is I've got a, an old shaft here that has, has still got this uh, swage on the end of it and if I put this in and pull it out, you should hear that. I'm going to pull it up next to the mic. There's actually just a little bit of vacuum that gets created. That's how, I mean, it, it, you don't want it to where you have to force it, but you don't want it to where it's sloppy. And you just have to play around with that a little bit uh, and, and find the right one. Now, once I've got my footings cut, I've got my arrows, then I'm going to decide on which insert I'm using. Now, I've been using these inserts for John Hand for several years. Uh, Tom Jurgensen turned me on to them. And he makes them in several different uh, weights. These are 250 grain and they're made to fit the Black Eagle uh, inside diameter of the Black Eagle shafts. He also makes some for me that are 300 grain, so they're just a little bit longer. Excuse me, I've got the wrong one. There's a, there's a 250 grain and there's a 300, so you can see the difference in the length. Hopefully that comes through on the video. Um, and the main reason I did this is so I could switch between my 160 grain Magnus heads that I really like and a 200 grain head uh, in the, the Simmons. So that's the reason I've got some of the, got him to make some of the 300s. Now this year, I actually started using thread in uh, broadheads again, and Ethics makes this really great stainless steel insert that's 200 grains and it's actually notched so you can cut it off and I think you can go down to 125. I think it's 125, 150, 175 and then 200 if it's full length. And I've been very pleased with these. Um, if you're using those then you're going to have to get uh, a threaded adapter for your broadheads if you're using glue on broadheads. Couple notes here. Always get steel. Uh, I don't care if you if, if your weight's off then figure out a way to either change your spine of your shaft or lighten the broadhead to go with a steel adapter over an aluminum. And the reason I say that is these, these adapters, and I'm still a little bit um, uneasy about them, but so far I've had good results uh, in 2019. But when you take a threaded adapter like this, when you look at the size of this, where your weak point is, is once you get into the threads. Because after you cut the thread into that uh, threaded adapter, the amount of metal that's actually left underneath those threads where the grooves have been cut is not very much at all. And they will bend and they will break. I've had it happen with brass inserts. 
I have not had it yet happen with the stainless steel. So I don't know if the stainless steel is just harder enough that it prevents that from happening, but I haven't had it happen yet and I've actually abused these a, a good bit uh, last year. Now, if you're using the uh, insert slash adapters like these, and these are made by John Hand at Traditional Archery Solutions. The, the threaded inserts are made by Ethics Archery and I'll put links to both at the end of the video. But you can just use a standard glue on fill point. Um, you can use the brass ones from Ace or you can just use the standard steel ones and they fit right on the shaft and actually they're pretty tight. I mean, you can see right there that's just pressed on uh, and it's not going anywhere. The, the steel's not quite as tight. But um, So that's all the components. We've got the shafts, we've got the footings, we've got the inserts, and we've got the points. So now we're going to talk about how to actually put all this together. I want to emphasize that the way I'm putting this together for all intents and purposes, it's a permanent solution. Now, it's going to last forever. You're going to be able to shoot these arrows thousands of times, um, but it, it's going to be hard to disassemble these components once you're done based on the way that I'm putting them together. So just keep that in mind. Again, this isn't for everyone, but I am trying to answer as many questions as I can for those that have asked. All right, so I, I've got my, my shaft ready to go. Um, I've got my footings cut, again, to fit the air shaft that I'm using. I've got my adapters ready, and I've got my points, whatever those may be. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and, excuse me, I'm going to take my insert, I'm going to slide it onto the shaft, excuse me, my footing. I'm going to slide it onto the shaft, and I'm going to take a marker, and I'm just going to uh, sharpie, and I'm going to mark the back of that, of that footing. Then I'm going to take some fine grain sandpaper and I'm just going to rough up that shaft a little bit back to where I marked that, that shaft. It doesn't have to be a lot. You just want to rough it up just a little bit. And then I keep a, a, normally this would be a damp cloth, but I keep a cloth handy and I wipe it off. I'm not a fan of using solvents. So alcohol, acetone, those kind of things, they can be potentially be bad on the air shaft, uh, but they typically all will leave some form of residue. So I just use some a damp cloth and let it dry before you continue the process. Now I'm also going to take, and I usually keep a piece of sandpaper, same lightweight sandpaper, I'll roll that up as tight as I can get it, I'll slide it inside the shaft, and then I'm doing the same thing. I'm just working it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. You're just wanting to give a little bit of a scarred up surface for the, for the epoxy to adhere to, and then I would clean that out with a damp Q-tip. So now I've got the shaft ready to go. I would also then usually take my footing and I'd run a chainsaw file, a new one, one that doesn't have oil or anything like that on it. Run that up in there, brush that out real good, just score it up a little bit, and then the same thing, clean it out with a Q-tip real quick and let that dry. Now real briefly, before I go forward, if I'm using the insert adapters, this doesn't apply. However, if you're using or decide to use the Ethics Archery insert, a neat thing that I found last year or this past year, is I can take this footing and slide it into that, excuse me, the insert, slide it into the footing, and it's a very snug fit. With just a few taps of the hammer, what I end up with is a footing that is inside, excuse me, uh, an insert that is inside my footing. And then on the back, I've got my, you can see that I've got a, a gap around that insert, between my insert and my footing and it is a perfect snug fit to then slide all that up together. And now you talk about something that's hard to, to tear up and come apart, you've got it. Now, if I'm using just the footing, I would slide the footing on and then I'd put the insert in. So that's what it would look like. Now, I've got everything sanded up, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna mix up my 24 hour epoxy. Again, I'll leave a link to this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, a spot about the size of a nickel, maybe a quarter. You don't need a lot for one arrow. Now, if I was doing a dozen or a half dozen, I'd make up a little bit more, but if I'm just doing one arrow, you don't need a lot. I'm gonna coat the outside of the shaft with the epoxy, and then I'm gonna take my, if I'm using a, a, pre, a, a one piece insert adapter, then I would take this and I would just work the shaft. As I, as I get it on here, the epoxy will pile up in the back and then I can wipe off the excess. 
Then I'm gonna put epoxy on my insert component of my adapter, making sure I fill these grooves up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna work that shaft on and get everything lined up. If I'm doing a fill point, I may go ahead and glue the fill point on. If I'm doing a broad head, I'll probably wait and do that later. And then I'll stand this up, put a little weight hanging off the knock, find a place where I can lean it up. And then I'll just come back every, I don't know, half hour to an hour and make sure that everything's still seated the way it's supposed to be. And after a couple of hours, it's not going to move, but you've got to give it a full 24 hours to fully set. Now, if I'm doing the threaded adapter and I've already got it seated in my aluminum, I'm just gonna basically work some epoxy down in this, uh, in, the, in between the, the adapter that's inside and the footing. I'm gonna put a little bit inside the shaft here to get started, and I'm gonna put some on the outside of the shaft, and then I'm just gonna get this started on, and I'm gonna work it back and forth as I slide that down on the shaft. Once it's seated, I'm done, put a little weight on it, and you're ready to go. Um, again, wait the full 24 hours, and once that has set, again, they're, they're indestructible. Typically what'll happen is if you're hitting a glancing blow or if you just repeatedly hit something very hard, it might break, it'll break behind this footing. But you've got a lot more uh, leverage than you would if you didn't have anything but the point up here. It can't mushroom. Um, it's very hard for anything to bend in this setup. And once you get everything epoxied up, the, everything from here forward acts as one piece, um, especially if you're using the one piece adapters. Now, if you're using threaded adapters, again, you still have that weak point in the threads, but after shooting them quite a bit, the latter part of 2018, I haven't had any issues and I'll probably be moving forward in 2019. Uh, using that setup, but I'm, I'm still gonna keep shooting these solid one piece ones. I just, I really like them. So that's pretty much it. I hope this video helps for those of you that have been asking for it. I am sorry it took so long. Um, again, if it's not your thing, uh, I get it because it is expensive and it's just not something that everybody has to do or maybe everybody wants to do, but uh, it works really well for me and I'm, I'm glad to share with my, my, my listeners and the followers. So until next time, get out there, get shooting. And have fun, everyone. Thank you.